Did I pass out? Hey, so, is it just me, or does this void look a little less menacing? Wait, what the heck is that over there? Why is there another hologram here? You sure do inquire about a lot more things than most people, sir. Well for good reason. You expect to throw another hologram into this void and have me not question it. But sir... I didn't add anything to this void. Huh? You see, the creator of this void, labeled the Void Master, created a failsafe in case he happens to miss a possible event that happens within a void. Each void has the ability to record the actions and activities that go on inside, and, with a simple command, he and his holograms are able to play it back in any situation they see fit. So, this isn't actually happening in real time? Correct. We are simply just outside viewers to a series of events that have already occurred. As such, we are unable to interfere. Now that sounds like some true plot convenience crap. Indeed, sir. So then wait a second. Yes. Who is this? Void Master? The Void Master is... hard to define. How so? As simple as the title of his character may seem, his presence within the voids that he is supposedly the master of has always been very... sporadic, to say the least. The void me and Supersonic were in, isn't the only one? I seem to have disregarded how pure to the entire concept you are, sir. Allow me to compensate for this error. Despite your seemingly misinformed belief, this void is not the only one of its kind currently functioning. In fact, according to my most recent calculations regarding this matter, there are currently hundreds of operational voids similar in architectural detail to this one you find yourself in, as well as hundreds of aesthetically different holograms operational in each. Wait, so then, if there are somehow hundreds of these things just lying around on Earth, then... Incorrect, sir. Huh? It would admittedly be a bit of a ridiculous and underdeveloped plan if these voids were attached in any way shape or form to anything related to the material world. As such, these voids aren't simply located anywhere fathomable to mere mortals such as yourself. Instead, these voids find themselves etched into the very fabrics of reality itself, unable to be seen through a regular man's eyes. Well if that's the case, then how was I able to see it before I became... Well... This? It becomes a much different case once an entity is actually present inside of the void itself. On the outside, nothing is seen. However, once someone finds themselves inside, nothingness envelops them, giving way to an actual tangible space to be active in. Ah. Advancing the subject past this area, the specific time period in which these voids were created, as well as the resources used and motives required to perform said act unfortunately remained unknown to me. His name is the only aspect to his character in which I have any idea towards, and even then, it is simply the name that he gave himself in my programming. Any other tangible label is unknown to me at this time. Well dang it, that isn't much of a lead, is it? Indeed, which is why I sense that this line of conversation would be best left unexplored for the time being. You wish to know more about the globe kind, correct? You bet your freaking butt I do. Excellent. Allow me to explain further. When it comes to visual aspects, globes have the ability to come in a sizable pool of different colors and sizes. In my time being operational within this void, I've dealt in a number of different types, ranging when it comes to aesthetic flair. I mention this seemingly irrelevant and cosmetic detail because of the way globes are handled within your typical void. Through telepathic communication, holograms are informed by the Void Master whenever a globe is due to be deposited into their respective voids, an event in which they need to meticulously prepare for in advance. Once the entity is warped into a void of the Void Master's choosing, it is typical for one of two different events to transpire. One such sequence is for a globe to be deposited, only for them to never awaken from the unconscious state they are left in. In this case, an internal destruction of their form begins to occur, completely draining the color from the globe and effectively marking them as deceased. The other sequence is for said globe to be deposited, and for them to awaken soon after being dropped off. However, 
due to the state of the void they find themselves in, their emotions begin to fluctuate some time after, causing them to internally crumble in on themselves. This event also causes the draining of their colors, eventually leading them to death. Oh. Oh my god. As a hologram, my job is to use any means necessary to ensure that a globe does not perform any actions that would violate any of the rules that are set forth by the Void Master. And these rules are? The law of plot convenience. Wonderful. So then, wait, the thought just occurred to me. Globe. Er, uh, the most recent globe besides me who just escaped, subject 9 to whatever. He didn't have a color to him, right? Correct, sir. Well then, with what you just told me in mind, did he have his color drained from him? And if this is the case, then, how is he not dead? This question you have just proposed is one that this void was about to set off in answering. Wait, really? The Void is designed by the Void Master to skip past parts that could be deemed either irrelevant or against the law of plot convenience. Subject 9, 2, 3, 1, 9, 8 was a bit of a different case. <laughs> Sir, behold, the globe in which you've grown accustomed to, 